He has a big butt and a bigger following. In 2023 alone, I got 4 billion views. Your channels should be a course in college. I'm your host, Jason Rasnick, founder of Benzinga, a leading platform in the financial world with the mission to level the playing field for individual investors. And this is the Raz Report podcast, where we share inspiring stories, expert advice, and exclusive perspectives to keep you ahead of the ever-changing world of investments and entrepreneurship. Let's dive into the show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Raz Report. We have an exciting one for you. We have a digital creator that everyone has seen his videos. If you haven't, then you're living under a rock. So this name is Frankie LaPena. It is amazing what this guy has grown from. He's from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He averages a couple hundred million views a month. He's the mastermind behind the world famous green screen Zoom call series. He's launched his own merchandise line. We're going to dive into his journey, where it all began to get this viral fame and his creative ventures. He has a big butt and a bigger following. Frankie, thank you for coming on the Raz Report. Yeah, it's amazing to meet you. Uh, hundreds of millions of views. I, you know, uh, I, I go into your YouTube thinking, you know, 10 million views. Your videos, your shorts, 594 million views. Uh, you know, Olympic trampoline at a pool party. World's quickest knockout, 400 million views. Um, when you put, post these videos, did you have any idea they're going to grow like that? And I know these are YouTube shorts, but yeah, did you have yeah. any idea they're going to grow like that? No, you never know. I, I have a good idea or I'll be more confident in some rather than others. But for instance, my most viral one that me jumping into a pool party, I didn't think it was that cool. I didn't think it was going to be. It is definitely not my most impressive video. It's just for. So one thing people don't know about that one is very weird over half or about half of the views on that are people from India. For whatever reason, the country of India loved that video. Maybe if there's somebody watching this podcast that's from India, you can explain in the comments below why it was so appealing. If there's some inside joke over there, we don't know. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> jumping in a pool. Well, I'm, I'm actually going, and we're going to talk about YouTube shorts versus YouTube regular videos in a yeah. second and how much money you make per year mm -hmm. um, on this stuff. But I'm looking at one of your oldest uh, shorts, world's first Zoom call squat. Okay, mm -hmm. so cue the B-roll on this. You're, you have a green screen attached to you. You have a computer, mm -hmm. this contraption. Like, how did you come up with this thing? Yeah, so I went to Grand Valley State University. GVSU. Over, yeah, GVSU. I used Did, to sell textbooks online. I nice. I created one of the first textbooks I like wow. back in the nineties. Yeah. Small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably bought some from the Lakers store. Yeah, GVSU, baby. Yeah. I remember that's why I know the all the schools yeah. around town. When someone names like a small random school and I don't know it, I'm like shocked yeah. because I had to build the, the database of all you know, yeah. all the schools or so many. That's wild. Yeah. So I was uh I was going to Grand Valley, I was a film and video student and it was during COVID. COVID hit in 2020, March 8, right, is when everything started shutting down. And then shortly after that, all the Zoom calls, classes started happening, and it was a pain in the ass. And I started taking the calls from my car. On my drive home, I'd be taking one of my classes and have the camera off. And it worked out for me for two, three months. And then one time I got called on to turn on my camera, <laughs> I got in trouble. And so I uh, developed this green screen to put behind myself it's so a, that it's you amazing. could adjust the, the background to make it look like you're in an office, but in reality, you're out doing something else. And then I made a video of that because I thought it was funny and put it on did TikTok. It, and went did it ever viral. really work though? Um, so right around when I, I really dialed in my setup, yeah. I graduated. So I never really oh. got to test it. And then you made a video and then this green screen thing that you, this contraption, like became a thing, right? Yeah. I mean, people aren't running around out in the wild doing it for real, but it does, it does work. Yeah. I Are mean, you like a carpenter too, like to build this thing? No, I went to a local uh, hardware store that my buddy owns in Grand Rapids and it was like $9 worth of PVC pipes and glue. Um, yeah. I'm looking at it now. Okay. Yeah. So... Your YouTube shorts, I was going to brag to you. My son has a YouTube short that has 19 million views, uh, interviewing yeah. go interviewing golfers, like who's the most famous contact on their phone. He's 11, and he goes around. So I thought 19 million was a lot. And then I go to your YouTube shorts, 594, 400 million, 300 million, 250 million. 
I would think you're making a lot of money through YouTube. But what, do you know like what kind of traffic you're getting to YouTube Shorts? What perc- like are you the, one of the top ranked YouTubers or? Yes. So oh, and you have eight million plus followers, subscribers, subscribers, yeah, subscribers. Yeah, it is YouTube Shorts. Really, is a cheat code for getting views and subscribers. It's unreal. So I I am in the top one percent of the YouTube Shorts is it like in terms of measuring performance my channel and people think this is a big misconception that i'm making millions and millions of dollars from youtube shorts because uh in 2023 alone i got four billion views billion with a b four billion four billion there's like six five to six billion people in in the world (laughs) you know some of them are are returning viewers probably and from well yeah yeah i mean Sure, but yeah. still four still billion. You're is unreal. That's I mean, worth a like, lot it's, it's, of money. Let's say it's eight hundred million people. You know, uh, you'd think that it's worth a lot of money to advertisers. So, in 2023, I made oh, just over a hundred grand from monetization on YouTube Shorts, and a uh, hundred grand. In, yeah, I, I would, which th- is good money, but for the amount of views, you'd think it'd be way. Four billion, that, which is, right? is you said is like top one percent. One percent. I would think it's a seven-digit check you would have got. Yeah. No, YouTube Shorts is not. I'm sure when I'm done doing this in four or five years, it'll be paying millions. YouTube Shorts, but right now is kind of the beginning of it. Especially, I mean, 2020, 2021, YouTube Shorts was just becoming a thing, and so now the, the money's getting better every year. It's just not, not great. Like I wouldn't even call it. It's definitely not sustainable. Like if you were to try to be a YouTube short creator as a career path. That's not going to happen because unless you're getting 10 billion views, I mean, you could live comfortably with a hundred grand in some places in the country, but the odds that you're going to, your videos are going to perform that good are almost zero. Yeah. And I mean, for what you, yeah. Cause like to get that kind of views yeah, is impossible. Uh, impossible. And you, and you have the library and, um, but I guess things, Positive things can lead from that. You just before we we started this show, you mentioned that you just did a candy mm-hmm. cr- like yeah. So the way that I make money, real money, is from brand deals and partnerships, ad campaigns. So for instance, I just did a campaign uh, with Candy Crush, the app, which is one of those fun apps where you match candies, and John, it was me and John Cena. Somehow they decided we're the two candidates. <laughs> They wanted for the the video. Just saw this. John Cena in a movie, Trainwreck, and I had my seven year old daughter with me. Yeah. And there's some big sex scenes that I oh, had geez. to I had to keep forwarding, you know, like pause for it over. She's <laughs> like, "No, go back." She go. She has no idea. She's uh-huh. like, "Dad, that guy was just twerking." Oh, <laughs> That's what he was. She, it rated R. It was rated. I don't know. I think <laughs> I don't know. I had, she was. I had a four. I had to go because yeah. she, she thinks that he was going to date. She thinks he was doing a dance move. So mm-hmm. we'll be able to look back yeah. on this like ten years from now and laugh. Yeah, but. he's a hot topic right now. I mean, he's yeah. just naked at the Grammys, and he just came out with that other movie, Ricky Stenicky. And, and you just did it. Yeah, I, yeah. You, and you just did a thing with him. Yeah, it was unreal. I think that's the biggest A list celebrity I've done a video with. The only other other videos I've done with celebrities is Jason Drulo, Marshmello, the DJ. <laughs> David Dobrik, not uh, John Cena is like a different type of. He's like he's an A list. Right? He's a, he's, an a, he's yeah. a list. Was Jason A-list. Derulo cool? Yeah, he is. I've I've with a lot of these people, I'm never with them off camera, just hanging out. I'm constantly on camera, so they could behave differently. But I don't I don't know because I, I wasn't with them, just hanging out casually. But when we were on camera, super. Super nice, super cool. Do you stay in touch with any of these guys you do these things with, like Dobrik or any of these? No, I stay in touch with their agents or managers or videographers. Yep. And when I come back into town, we'll shoot them a text, be like, hey, is XYZ available? Let's make another video. Yeah, and and I'm going to go back to your career and like how you got started in this whole game but let's just finish this youtube discussion so your youtube one hundred thousand dollars last year for your shorts of four billion views which is tremendous amount your youtube longer videos not as many views and that's where more of the advertisers Mm. revenue comes in right yep and and i was gonna go instagram and tiktok you don't make money from correct i am not monetized on tiktok or instagram why not because the money is so bad it's, is it? It's laughable. The TikTok just came out with a new incentive to make the 60 second plus videos. You'll you'll make a lot more money there, but 
I don't really, I rarely make something over 60. So couldn't you take four of your videos and put it into one, four of your clips? I mean, I don't know if that's... I could. I could start making little mini compilations, but uh, my I just videos want to know are so, a... they're so one-off. They're so different. Each one is so, it, they're, they're its own individual weird thing. And I could do a compilation. It might, I don't know. I, I could try. I could see what happens, but... Yeah, I, I just, I just wonder. And then you mentioned 29 days ago you got on Snapchat. Yeah, so you, I got verified, verified on Snapchat, which then you get access to the – Snapchat is weird to me. It's so different than the other apps. You get access to the Discover page okay. once you become a Snap star, and then you can start doing public stories, but then they also have Spotlight, and that's a separate thing. Snapchat is very confusing to me. That's why I haven't been able to figure it out until now. Will you get paid on Snapchat? Eventually, yeah. The The money, from what I'm being told, is really good on there. That's – what I'm being told. Yeah. That's, um, I have some, in tic whatever, past TikTokers yeah. who make great money on Snapchat now. Um, you went from zero to 280,000, well, you had followers, but 280,000 subscribers. So you're uploading your library of content and then mm -hmm. somehow people discover it on Snapchat? Yeah. So Snapchat has Spotlight, which is exactly the same thing as TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. It's just a little emblem within the app on the bottom right corner you press and then it pulls up a feed of videos that are going viral and trending. So you can make money from Spotlight, but you can also make money from stories. So it'll be, in it'll be interesting to see how you do on Snapchat. Yeah, the know? advertisers on there for whatever reason are paying so much money. I don't know if it's because they're seeing a good ROI versus TikTok and Instagram and YouTube or what? It's just, it's just shocking to me because Snapchat stock, it, it, we're, so Benzinga, we're in the financial media yeah. space stock market and the stock has not performed well. Whereas like these other ones like Google or, I mean, um, you think these other ones like Facebook, Instagram, you think Instagram would be paying pretty good money. How many yeah. followers do you have on Instagram? Uh, 1.92 million. I mean, like you get like another 50,000 every month. Like how does that work? Yeah. I don't really uh, study or look at my analytics on Instagram. Cause it doesn't matter. No. Cause I'm not making, not that it's all about money, but it's the primary focus for me is constantly putting out the best, most impressive, most funny videos possible. Cause if that, if that is happening, if I can do two uploads a week, which is, which is what I average, and both of them are bangers, both of them are hard hitters and do lots of views, then everything else will fall in line. Yeah. Like if you can stay relevant, get a, get billions of views, then everything else will fall in line. All the brand deals will fall in line. All the followers will keep going up. All the relevancy will stay there. And that's, yeah. that's the game that everybody plays is to, to stay relevant. Because you do something two months ago that goes mega, mega viral, and not today, it's relevant. It's like... People, the internet moves so fast, and if you are relevant, even two weeks ago, people don't care now. What's the next thing? What's the next funniest, biggest meme or thing? You know, yeah. it's hard to stay relevant for a long time. I mean, what you've done, uh, well, so let's, I guess, let's go back to Frankie LaPena, like, before this social media fame. Um, mm -hmm. You're from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, you went to Grand Valley State. Yep. Did you know what you wanted to be when you were in college? Yeah, right when, right when I was, uh, I think I was in eighth grade, picked up my first camera and just thought it was the coolest thing ever that I could make videos and then bring a, uh, put them in a timeline, edit them, and then create this like digital product or this digital vision that I had had in my head before I went out and made it. It was like the coolest thing ever to me. So all the way through high school, I was doing that. As a freelance guy, just anything I could video, you name it. Like, like weddings. Real, real estate weddings, um, small business, like header videos for websites, you name it. Like anything I could get my hands on. I just loved it. The videoing itself, the editing, the yep. producing, the everything. And then in, in entering Grand Valley, I knew exactly what I wanted to major in, film and video. And then uh, two years, no, about one year, 2021 is when I first started posting my social media videos. So I was like one or two months away from graduating when I started my TikTok. So 2021, because I graduated in April. So you had this tale on already of videos and editing. So you're like, before you graduate, you're like, I'm going to start, I'm going to create a TikTok. Well, I, 
people uh, don't believe me when I tell them this. I started at TikTok as a complete, it was a bet. I made a bet with my buddy, Jaden, who was showing me TikTok videos at the time in 2020. He was like, look at these videos. You're so funny. They're hilarious. And I was like, that is the most brain dead, nonsense, degenerate, yep. stupid brain rot thing I've ever seen. I could make something way funnier and way more viral than that. It's like, I bet you can't. It's not that easy. And then just to prove him wrong, I started my channel and started posting miscellaneous weird things that I thought had potential to go viral. And then it was like four or five videos in that one of them really popped off and it was like five or six million views. What was it? Oh, gosh. This is before like... This is, yeah, this is the very beginning. It was... Um, the first one that went really big was the green screen Zoom call from the car. Oh there's a laptop God. on my dash. Yeah. And I'm filming the laptop and it pans around and it's me like giggling and it looks like I'm in an office when I'm in the car. That one was my first mega, mega viral Because you had the green screen behind you and then you showed what it would look like if someone was on the other side of you. Like, because you, you know, you look like you're in an office. You had the green screen behind you. Mm. So how do you show that it looks like you're in an office? Well, to the people on the call. Yes. They don't have any perspective or, re or they don't know where I am. Exactly. But the green screen is directly behind me. So then you activate within Zoom your background, your custom background, because you can choose. But then do you record the Zoom as well? So then you could get the clip of you. Of oh, well, some some of them, whenever I'm faking it, some of them are real. Yeah, so some say some of them are, are real. real. Live calls and I'm on. So they, they'll be screen recorded. Got it. And that's how, so that's, yeah. so that's how it kind of started. So it was like a bet. And then you're like, wow, this works. Yeah. yeah and were, was, were you addicted? Not, after, no. It no, was, but it once it worked, were you like. I was on high in the beginning. I was like, oh my gosh, I I did. This is insane. Look how much attention I'm getting. I got like how many TikTok followers do you have? Right now, today, yeah. uh, 8.5 million. Okay. Um, keep going. So yeah. you're like on a high. You're, you're, doing, you're making these videos. You win the bet with the, mm -hmm. your friend. Then what's yeah, next? And I was like, gosh, how do I uh, keep this going? Let me just. Social media as a whole is you're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks, seeing what resonates with people, seeing what's funny. How do they react? What do they think each time that. Because the, the concept of the green screen Zoom calls could have flopped and not resonated with people just as good as the odds of it succeeding. I didn't know. You didn't, you, nobody knows until you try. So then I uh, kept that thing going for about a year and totally milked it, milked it until it was, there was nothing left to do. It was like I'd done a car, a dirt bike, a football game, a yep. skydive, a scuba dive, a trampoline, like every possible imaginable place you could take a silly – Zoom call with your fake backdrop from I had done. I was like, dang, okay, what do I do next? And that's where the big butt character came in after your Yeah, one. you got this big butt, which we all know, you know, if it's real, we all know. And um mm -hmm. and <laughs> those bra those like khaki shorts that you're wearing now. Yeah. Um Yeah, the story behind these is why people always ask why are you wearing the same outfit in every video? It was, it was because in the beginning I was doing a lot of videos at night with my my fake security guards. And if I'm wearing all black or darker colors at night, it doesn't stand out as good on video. So I just chose something that was a lighter color. And Got the it. Cream just happened to be that. So color. you're making these videos, the big butt things. Like, were you making money at this point then? No, I wasn't making uh, real money in the first two and a half years. Because the the like I had mentioned earlier, the the way that I make real money is from the brand deals and the ad campaigns. Yep. And they would, they will not pay you good money until they you've proven yourself and they see that you're consistent and you're getting or averaging millions of views every single video because you're a bet to them. They look at you and they're like, okay, we see he is going to average. He averages this many millions of views. We should pay him this much money and we're going to be confident that the video is going to perform X amount. You know, every, every influencer is a gamble for them. Yeah, totally. So um, if you're not looking at his pages, again, with Frankie LaPena, L-A-P-E-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Looking at YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, now Snapchat. Um, you can see all these different accounts. So yeah, they're, these brand deals are, are making bets. So do you have an agent that negotiates these, these mm -hmm. brand deals or do you just do it? Yeah, I have an agent that will handle all the email threads. Sometimes it'll be like 200 long length email threads and he's going back and forth about the contract or about the specific deliverables, because the brand will say, we want one video 
for X amount of dollars. And he'll say, well, how about we put it together as a package, four videos across 2024 and X amount instead as like a package deal. Or he'll just say uh, one of them will offer me like a low ball and be like, no, get out of here. Yep. No, thanks. Just all the, the BS and miscellaneous stuff because as a creator, I should be focusing on the creative, right? I shouldn't be... Yep. So in these shorts that you make now, do you wear like the brand's logo or like... No, so a lot of the brands and what I think I'm really good at is brand awareness, getting maximum views and eyeballs. So it'll be, for instance, the Professional Fight League is one I've been really successful with. Yep. Hundreds of millions of views on every single video where See. we do the fake knockout skits. They, they're it. real hits. I'm not getting knocked out for real, but they're real hits. And they will... Uh, like last year, I did four videos with them, and they take care of me, pay me pretty well. I'm not supposed to legally say what they they pay me. They could get me in trouble, but they do pay me well. And I was like, do you put the logos on your body? But instead, no. You yeah. do, what you do is you go interact with the professional fight league and do skits. You do this. Yep. The NFL is also a client of yours. Yep. You've done yep. like. NFL Combine where you you ran the thing and they're announcing it. He's looking like he's going. It's a great video. Cue that in the B-roll, yeah. right? Like Yeah, so the it'll be like physical comedy within yes. their venue and yes. the branding is everywhere. Not on me, but it's on the, the yeah. PFL. It's on the cage. Yep. In the NFL Combine, it's in the backdrop. And also they're getting tagged in the descriptions about them or the caption. And then they'll go and engage with the video and comment and then I'll pin it at the top. Yep. And then they'll it'll just... A lot of talk will happen. A lot of sharing of the video will happen. and They go viral. They go viral. I'm looking at your views. So do you have like one that was like the craziest request that someone wanted you to do that you didn't do? Like mm. that you got request, like the professional fighting leagues one, NFL, like anything like, I don't know. Mm. They want you to go at the zoo and be in a tiger's cage with theirs. I don't freaking yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, no, nothing. No one's... None of the brands have asked me to do something okay. insane, but like for instance, I mean, it'd be crazy if the professional fight league was saying we want you to get knocked out. I just that was my first yeah. thought was let's make killer videos that lots of people would enjoy and laugh at. And the only way to do that if you're in a fight cage is you gotta get knocked out. So every time I do a video with them, there's a, a fake knockout happening, which. A lot of them hurt a bad. Wow. Hurt really bad. If you plug some of the videos in here as B-roll, you see them getting absolutely smoked in the face. It's like a Mike, it's like a Mike Tyson punch out. Yeah, one of them got me right in the forehead. That one, I got kicked in the face. I got elbowed in the face. Straight Your forehead looks punch great. In the yeah. Face. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's a miracle I haven't broken a nose doing them. No, it, it, it's crazy. So, all right, so we were in college and you – you were like, okay, make these videos. You had a bet with your friend Jaden. You mm -hmm. got these views, and then you graduate, and then you, um, you know, started that green screen, and then this big butt uh, persona takes place, and you're recognized. I mean, you're you're doing videos with the biggest of the big singers, um, to other influencers from Dobrik to Jason mm -hmm. Derulo, um, and you know, you, you're. You're out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Like, mm -hmm. isn't it like kind of crazy that you're just you have eight million eight point one seven million followers on YouTube that I'm looking at right now? Isn't it kind of crazy that like you're just in your apartment, your house, whatever, mm -hmm. doing this stuff, and you're able to create a career? Like, I don't it know. It is wild. Yeah, the they say that kids nowadays don't want to be astronauts. They they want to be YouTubers. That's like the number one profession that kids want. Yeah, they say that they want. It is wild. I hope that I'm an example as far as like, like you said, being born and raised in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that I hope I'm an example. You could do this anywhere. You don't have to be in Los Angeles or New York or a big city where all of them congregate out there. It's like, why do you want to yep. be near where everyone and their cousin is doing this internet digital stuff? I would rather be an outlier in a small city and you don't the only time that I would need to be in California for my video concepts is like if I need a palm tree or something, you know, like you could do anything. You, I could do everything that I've been doing from Michigan. I don't need to go to Los Angeles. Like if I, if I'm going to collaborate with some other internet people, yeah. But the videos are end of the day, you're either making good, funny videos or they suck and they're not good. 
no yep. matter where you are. It's not going to change. But is, is it sometimes that they're, like you said, not good, but like sometimes if you don't get the views, does it mean that they're not, wasn't good or the algo didn't pick you up properly? Mm, like, well, the, when, when, if you're asking that about TikTok, that is a separate story. But generally speaking, yes, if the video is not performing, it's, it's uh, your own fault. Video is just not resonating with people. It's good. I got to tell our people here that up and like, okay, good. All right. But if you're doing, I mean, if you're doing branded, if you have a business account, uh, it's totally different than a creator account because they know that you are operating a business or potentially promoting products or services and they will suppress your views because they want you to pay for that because they know that you're going to make money. Okay. Versus like a creator individual account, it's a different playing field. Got it. Okay, now TikTok is giving you is has changed recently. The yeah, views. TikTok is TikTok has come become complete garbage since they came out with the shop. Everything. Also, this is one thing that one of my reps at TikTok told me uh, has changed about their algorithm since all these wars started happening. The there's a lot of like videos that leak of beheadings or bombs or people getting thrashed to bits. And so because of that, TikTok has to batten down the hatches and make the algorithm more strict to not let the videos sneak through and leak through of bad things. And so as a result of that, everyone else gets effed and their videos are, are getting taken down for completely unreasonable reasons. Uh, dozens and dozens of my videos have been taken down the past six months. And just and when they get taken down, are you able to argue it? Or no, you no. I, you can. It never works. My this son, is, he was doing these interviews at the Rock Mortgage Golf Tournament. His account went from zero to 25, 40,000 followers and, or subscribers, and they took it down because he was like, even though I was doing it with him, he was underage, you know, he was mm -hmm. in 13. And it was just such a pain in the ass to like, you yeah. know, like. And, no, everyone's videos are just getting flagged for or literally videos of me. Like the go-kart video, Aaron was just brought up over here yep. earlier. Me just driving around go karts with a couple guys up north, and yeah, it did fifty million views and got four point something million likes, and they took it down because it was dangerous. Oh videos of God. me running around with my security guards on the baseball field taken down. I think insane, like just. Where you get these security guards from, by the way? Uh, they're all my buddies uh, back home that are on college basketball teams. Okay, okay. They're just basketball guys. All right, so here's a little bit of rapid fire. Some people wanted to know about your mustache. Sold on eBay or something. Yeah. How'd you come up with the idea uh, yeah. for that? Gosh. Uh, God, I really don't remember the initial moment that I came up with that idea. Um, yeah, I it just dawned on me one day, what if I sold it? Because people are obsessed with it online. So how could I yeah. sell it? And I was like, what if I just shaved it, collected all the hairs, and then reassembled it on a portrait, which was like scaled the size of my face with glue and then just laid it over where my real mustache hair is where it was on the, the photo. Yeah. And <laughs> it turned out amazing. I went to a taxidermist to get his professional opinion and see how much it would cost, see how long it would take. Yeah, him. yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? Get out of here. And like, so, so me and my buddy did it. He's like, so get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it would take forever. Uh, each individual hair <laughs> to try to reassemble because they all okay. fall a certain way yeah on okay. my face right now but when you shave it off they're all out of whack yeah yeah, yeah. try to replace okay the hairs um and so the first one sold for two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars on ebay some guy in florida he should be on a watch list yeah uh, bought it he said it was a birthday present for one of his buddies that is unbelievable of your yes. mustache glued to a piece of like a uh, cardboard uh, no, so, a mustache glued to uh, like a high resolution photo. photo yes, yeah, so I mean of yep. the of the photo on the photo. So it was yep. a photo, not cardboard, but it was on yep. a photo. Correct, mm. framed nicely. And I mean, I <laughs> this could be a big niche if internet celebrities or just celebrities in general started doing it. That would be addition one. Like if it did become a big thing, it was like, oh my gosh, this is the next trend. These celebrities are selling their yeah. hair and reassembling it. Or something along those lines. Like uh, Dr. Disrespect. You know that guy? He's a big gamer. Really, really killer mustache. If he were to do it and sell it, he would make a lot of money, I bet. Yeah. So somebody just needs to start the snowball effect, and then if it becomes a big thing, that guy has addition one of the movement. Well, now you can sell your mustache again. Yeah. Or then my mustache is 
will be worth a lot more because I would be like patient one. Yeah. Or artist one. Have you always had a mustache? No, I grew it during the lockdown because no one was seeing me. I wasn't going out. Okay. So I, I thought it was just a fun thing. I like shaved my head and grew a mustache because nobody was seeing me. So now do you keep the mustache because of your appearance on social media or you yeah, once like... I grew it out, it was the first time I had grown out a mustache ever. And it was in twenty twenty, and then I was like, Oh, it looks kinda good. I just I will keep rocking it. I don't know if I could even grow one. Um <laughs> Yeah, I've, I, I, yeah, I don't know. So, okay, you have these personalities that the these two different personalities. At first, uh, the green skin guy, mm. the Jim Kardashian. How do you like? What's your process for coming up with this content and these viral ideas? Yeah, yeah, it's probably a pretty boring answer. It's just constantly thinking every moment of every day. Like even on the drive here, I'm taking a shower when I'm eating. Whenever uh, I'm at the gym, doesn't doesn't matter when. The worst time to Think about an idea is sitting down and trying to think about an idea, for me at least. It's just constantly be thinking throughout the day whenever you're doing daily tasks, and they'll come to me. So that way, yeah. And the Jim Kardashian is a takeoff of Kim Kardashian in the butt. Yeah, and... I didn't come up with that term. Some somebody commented that, and it was the top comment. Oh, on my first super super viral butt video, that was the top comment. Um, have you ever met Kim Kardashian? No, I really wonder if she's seen any of my videos, though. I think everyone's seen your videos. When I said that you were coming here today, the whole office is, oh, I know it, you know. Yeah, I don't um, know what comes up on her algorithm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, so this NFL um, advertisement you did, one of them, was supposedly mm -hmm. the number one social media share of the NFL. Yeah. Uh, like That is wild, yeah. Like, uh, we, like. Do you get paid more when you get more shares or just like... Yeah, I wish it was like that. We should have negotiated a contract where it's yeah. like every million views, I get X amount of yeah. dollars. Or ever, ever, no, yeah. no, I'll tell you. I think I think the contract is expired. I don't think they would care. So for that video that was groundbreaking, it's like the industry standard now that they show their investors or their marketing team or... Did you win some award for it too? Yeah, yeah. First, so that video got first place for best original content at hashtag sports awards. Okay. And um, they <laughs> guess, I want you to guess how much they paid me for that video. That was my first one I did with them and it was in 2021, October. Well, I was going to say a higher number. Now you got me positioned to lower. So yeah. I was going to say 50, but now I'm going to go 10. Five. Five. Five grand for that video. And that and video I was had so how, excited. And that to, video had how many views? Hundreds and hundreds of millions. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of out yeah. views. Mm. Yeah, I saw there was some weird account in India that reposted it when went back in 2021 when it was going viral. That had I saw 60 million views. Some weird little India account. Isn't it weird how they can just repost your content on their feed and then get the revenue if they make ad revenue from it? Yeah, there's a there's an, a software online that you can you can do and set up to collect that back. I haven't ever really cared to do it. My agents offered it to me before. But well, there's something to be said. The more play, the better. Like, we yeah. can get our videos on more platforms if we just want to give it away, like, open source. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, you could argue either way. Yeah. It's, is it worth going after that ad revenue or just so when let you, them give you the exposure? So when you post, do you use software to automatically go to – TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at the same time? Or do no. you go to each platform and post? Individually. Individually, okay. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, that was the number one social share that I felt. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, number one. They um it was written about in like six different languages, articles that I saw. It was <clears throat> uh such a big deal that I was allowed to do a video with Roger Goodell for the next one. So I saw it in the Zoom. Yeah, which they uh, – Roger Goodell. And the Ravens never, coach. They said that was the biggest deal ever that he would do a video with an influencer. They said that never happens. So I get our, our, Roger to our event here at the draft. He'll be in town, obviously. Yeah, um, that'd be – you, be cool. You got to announce a, a draft pick. You got to do something. The draft mm -hmm. is right in your hometown. You can you operate yeah, out I of got here. To. Yeah, you can shoot them a text after that. Yeah, you operate out of here. It's no brainer. We'll be here. We have a bunch of people coming. So that was uh, that's crazy with the NFL. And then you've done more with them now. So then you did more with them after that. So I'm assuming you got paid a little bit more after that. Yeah, it went up, but yeah. it still wasn't crazy because 
The NFL is, is notorious yeah, for you started at, Yeah, yeah, you started at a lower number. But, you know, uh, something to be said for getting the brand out there, like yeah, Super no, Bowl. Yeah, that was a yeah. career-changing moment for exactly. me. So if, the, if I had not done that with them, I'm not sure I'd be sitting here. Yeah, it's win. It's win win. It's win win. Yeah, like, so I would have done it for free. Like, some, like what, some people are like, "How much are you paying? How much are you pay me?" Yeah. The thing that I learned: money fouls doesn't lead. And so, like, now you're at a different level, so you get paid more. So when you're starting, you get paid less. It's just yeah. like a yeah. singer going into bars back in the day, and then they Taylor Swift. That's what she used to do, and yeah. right, like she couldn't say, "Hey, pay me fifty thousand dollars back in the day." So yeah. it's it's. I mean, yes, you want to get paid more, but you know, then it, it all, I mean, hopefully that's what works out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's like the wild west right now for social media. There's no standard. Yes. That's right. A- Everyone is different. I am worth more to the NFL than a thousand other creators randomly selected. Like my yeah. following in my demographic is more on par with theirs. So if there was X, Y, Z influencers, they're not worth as much as I am to them. All right, so uh, we took a little intermission. I uh, hope you checked out Benzinga Pro during this intermission. Um, but we're back with Frankie, the guy who has more social media followers than anyone I've had in this room here. So um, you do these stunts. Anything crazy? I see these belly flops that you do. Anything that you get hurt? Or are you still just doing creative stunts, but you haven't really gotten hurt yet? Yeah, the worst stunt injury that I've sustained was from Nitro Circus. If you're familiar with that, the thing that Travis Pastrana does where they have all the crazy action sports, people doing flips, and they invited me there. Uh, they didn't suggest, but they 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 said, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I got to hit the ramp. The be- They call it the Giganta Ramp. Yeah, okay. And uh, had zero... <laughs> instruction they gave me some instruction it's very tough to teach somebody at uh zero practice there's no practice runs there's yep. kind of a few uh tips here and there it's insane that they let me do that but i guess i've done an, enough internet stunts for them to be confident to let me attempt it and i just absolutely slammed so hard face first and it just killed destroyed my leg i had a huge hematoma hematoma i think that's what it's called yeah huge baseball right on my front half i can send you a picture of it it is ugly so uh, the one i want you guys to put in the b-roll the world's quickest knockout so i just played it mm. and it is freaking hilarious sounds a classic boom boom yeah right in the forehead yeah how many times do you have to film that to get it to be like that it was like six takes oh my god you got me in the neck or the ear or the it's, it's hard to time because it it looks not too too difficult when it's slowed down like that, but it happens so fast for him to like wind up cock back and keep in mind I'm running at him and jumping. So for him to aim exactly where we needed his hand to go was very tough. Okay, so that's that one. How about for the belly flop, Olympic trampoline, you know, at a pool party? Is that just a one time thing? And this is the greatest video ever. Yeah, no, I didn't get hurt at all. It was super fun to watch. Oh, well, you could do a flip there. That's cool. <laughs> Look at that. Where was Excuse that? Excuse me. That was at Grand Valley. Oh, my God. Allendale. So, so uh, the trampoline was there. Was it just that you went out? Were you already, like, famous at your school back then? Or, like... Um, I just knew that that pool party was going to be happening and thought, what could I do? By the way, where was what this would be pool a good party? Video? Like, it was at Grand Valley. But, like, is that an apartment um, complex? Yeah. Meadows apartment they complex. They have this. Like, right? like, this is a... They have pools at all the off-campus apartments. Yeah. This is a great pool party. Do you yeah, ever, do you ever go back to it? <laughs> it's uh, coming up in August. So, yeah. I'm probably too old to go to it now. I'm 26. That's... that's I, I hear you. Yeah. I just went up to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, went to Rick. We went to dinner, went to Rick's after mm. for 10 minutes. My gray hair, I felt like I would, like... I felt like I was 95 years old. It yeah. was like almost embarrassing being there. Yeah, no, I'll go back if there's another video to be made. But... All right, uh, we'll film it. Okay, so the, the, the um, and then you do a lot of these crazy things in Michigan. Like, where do you find these people to film with? A lot of people will just reach out to me um, if they have a video that they think has potential because they'll see, they know me or they see my crazy stunts online. And then they'll be like, hey, I got a jet powered pontoon boat. Over in Grand Haven, do you want to come do something with it? And then I'll oh, like, that's oh my gosh, sweet. yeah, let's wakeboard behind it. Or there's the <clears throat> kids with the go karts up north, and they'll they'll see me online. Yeah, the, like we said, the videos get so many views. They see 
what I'm doing, and then they'll offer up their contraptions. Their go-karts or... or... <laughs> okay. Uh, what advice would you give to a content creator or aspiring entrepreneur trying to do what you did? <sighs> advice. Don't get into it because you want to get famous or rich or both. If you get into it for the wrong reasons, it's never going to pan out. You got to... Like I mentioned, I was obsessed with and really like impassionate about making videos. So that came first. Got it. And that's my top priority. And the like the the money and the success will follow. So you gotta go passion first. And then because you can you can tell if somebody online is trying to get attention by doing stupid things and are are trying to clout chase or just just want to be famous it's you can kind of smell it from a mile out you know no it's it's passion any bit like what's the biggest challenge or have you had a big challenge that you faced in the last five years doing all this stuff mm. it's just the the weekly daily challenge of like not getting injured is the biggest thing because it's so i don't know how but it's just become so physical <laughs> it's like every week i'm almost breaking my neck uh, yeah. So, I, but I, I do love pushing myself. It's there's so many stunts where I didn't know if I would make it or if I could do it or if I'd be all right. Yeah, and then being able to like pull that off and you know, execute it—it's the best feeling ever. I wonder if you could become like a paid consultant to like brands or like companies. I know brands you do marketing for, but like how mm -hmm. to grow and like do stuff. So like we're Ben Zing, we do financial media, we do sports, we do, and we like report the news. But like, and Carly, who's sitting here in the room. Like, is there a way we should do it crazier that makes people want to see? Like, I remember Dave, Bob Menry did a video. It was it, it, he didn't even, he was drunk. It was like a, it was on Instagram Live, I think, and it was hitting a golf ball through door walls, and the door walls was this much open, and the, it was like five yards. So most likely he was going to get it through. But I stayed on the thing because I wanted to see if he got it through, or if it went and hit the glass, and then the window would break. So there was suspense there, and it made me tune yeah. into it. And I say, well, like. You need to create that suspense, which you, you people want to see your videos because yeah. like for that one we just looked at with the underwear mm -hmm. advertisement with the match and uh, passing gas, like you want to see what the resolve is. Exactly. You know, and like it yeah. seems like it comes so easy to you where I think it comes a lot harder to others, you it know? It is. It is. It's like a lot of human nature and psychology of packaging these videos yeah. in like 10 seconds, the first two seconds, first one second, you got to convince them to stay to watch the rest of the video. Okay. And then once they watch the full video, if they're laughing and it was really like resonated with them okay. and then they're going to like it, they're going to share it, they're going to comment on it and then the video is going to go super viral. So you got to package it all in such a short amount of time because people have like severe ADHD from just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to get them to stop and watch a video. You got to do some convincing. Yeah. That's, I mean, Mr. Beast, like you're, you're like in the same vein as Mr. Beast. I mean, he spends a lot on his stuff and he's the biggest YouTuber there is, um, but he does the longer videos and that's where, like, have you thought about doing longer videos? That's my goal for 2024. Get more into the, it's a whole other beast to tackle long okay. form videos. No, but it costs money to do and all, like, okay, now you have some merch. Now I know this, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. another cough attack. Sorry. I know, you have, you have water, you have water. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk this out. So, um frankie is coming out with this thing in april it's a game it's actually a game um it's not out yet but you're going to be able to buy it i don't know where you're going to buy it if you go to his website any of my social medias any of his social medias it's a game and inside the game um it comes this butt yes we show the butt that's right it's a family game i love this is a wait, but what, get your achievements to <laughs> this is great this is what was it's great so let me see the butt you yeah. put short on that i'll oh, show it on the okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. There you go. Oh yeah. What'd you say? <coughs> this. Oh yeah. They want me to wear this thing here. Uh, uh, the, so it's a game looking for a game that combines competition and butt slapping. Then you've turned over the right box. Um, so this is like trivia. Say the word without closing your mouth. Backpack. Right. <laughs> say the word without closing your mouth. So you'd have to say it like backpack. Back, say back. the word. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's back, five different back. categories of cards. There's two teams, and the two teams are competing against, against each other to try to get rid of their pile of cards as quick as possible. And the butt sits in the middle of the table, 
and there's people screw up. There's a lot of rules when it comes to each of the five card categories. And if you break the rules, you're opposing the opposing team is just waiting for you to screw up, and then they reach, smack the cheeks, and they smack you with a penalty. They add cards to your deck, and so you're further away from winning because you want to get rid of your cards. Okay, and if you win, then the butt. The, the, <laughs> yeah, if you win, I don't. No, what? So what do you do with this? You hit this at the like. If they screw up rules, there's a oh, lot of rules. That's okay. so you smack them with a penalty. Ah, okay, got yeah. it. Okay, yeah. the butt slap. All right, that's <clears> good. I like. And that. it's just fun. No, and so this company contacted you and came up with this concept. This is actually my good buddy that I met early on when I was doing the social media videos. He's he's over here in Detroit. I'm going to see him after this. Oh, really? Yeah, and he is a board game expert genius. He comes out with, like, board games and stuff? <laughs> yeah, he has some on shelves in Target, and I guess my character, Big Buck character, inspired him. This is great. great Maybe there was game. a Benzinga board game. You got to think of a board game for his buddy. How, you, you knew this guy from growing up? From social media, I met him in uh, 2021 over so, on Upper Straits Lake, if you know where that is. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly where yeah. it is. I know exactly where that is. Um, so he, FKA Games, <coughs> is that him? Yeah, he is, uh, I think it's a new LLC, FKA Games. I'm not sure how Sweet. old it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so is there any dream collab you want to do with someone? Anyone? Ooh. Like? There is. I, ju I just was asked mm. this the other day. Gosh, I, mean, you I just feel like the cop out answer for you just, me is Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, oh, I, I didn't ask you this one. What? How much did you spend on the butt signal? Oh, I think it was eight hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, the flashlight was was six hundred and fifty, seven hundred, which anyone can buy that flashlight. That's crazy. Um, yeah, the butt signal. Yeah, so you're. I mean, you're investing your time and energy. Um, any cheat codes to grow the following, the followings for anything? Cheat codes. Or any like insights that, yeah, that. Um, uh, you, yeah, like from, I, I mean, you're you're a master. Four billion views. I mean that. I mean what you've done, Frank, is not an easy thing. Like no. it's like, it's, yeah. I mean, you can go through and study my videos. It's so there. There is a cheat code. I tell <clears throat> I tell brands this also. You want a ten year old to be able to watch your video, and explain to another ten year old what's happening and why it's funny. And also you should be able to mute your video and understand exactly what's happening. Wow. Then there's no language barrier and it's super simple. It simplifies everything. And uh, another thing is you want to keep the video short. People's attention span is poop and you want to make sure that it's like, ideally I'll make mine anywhere from nine to like 13 seconds. Wow. For, for maximum views and growth. Carly, you hear that? Nine yeah. to 13 seconds. Yeah. And then also, I mentioned earlier, the first one to two seconds is critical. You need to hook them. Just like with a, when you're writing a book, like you want the beginning to be really good, you know, otherwise they're not going to hang around. The biggest thing for video performance is watch time. Like, Are they watching the full video? When you're saying the news, like Carly reads the news, I was thinking like, she's just staying there reading the news. Like, is there something that's more risky that people would tune in to see? Does she fall? You know what I mean? If she was like, mm -hmm. yeah, all she, my videos are comical. So if she was staying on one foot, you know what I mean? Like, maybe that's something like just different. You got to be different. And it, it depends what you're going for, though. If you want to go the, the comedy route like me, then you got to do stuff like that. But if you want to. Yeah, <clears throat> it just depends what you want. No, do, I get it. I get it. So this year you're working on longer YouTubes. Um, people can follow you on social media. Um, we'll put post all the social media things here. Um, are there any other new things you're working on that you haven't done in the past besides the board game? New things. No, just continuing down the path of the short form social media and uh, the Snapchat thing that I recently got into. Just keeping Good. keeping consistent what I've been doing is the plan. It's amazing that, I guess to, to wrap this up, it's amazing that what you've built – from Grand Rapids, Michigan, you're not. You didn't move to LA to be in like the Sway House or one of those house. You did this from your from learning about editing video, figuring it out, and then posting. And you created so many followers. And you said how many TikTok followers, YouTube followers. It's insane. It's so hard to get followers. Like I could do an interview with Michael Jordan, and I and it, it's hard for people to to find it because there's so much content out there. Yeah. What you've done with the first second, nine seconds, like it's. You sh your channels 
should be a course in college. And it's mm. like social because that's what you've done is very hard to repeat. Yeah, that's funny you mentioned that. A course in college, they when I was at Grand Valley, they s- spoke very lowly, said avoid social media. Don't <clears throat> they don't see that they're old professors, they didn't see any potential in it. But so, and you make a pretty good living doing this? Yeah. I mean you yeah. make the YouTube revenue we talked about, but do you you have enough brand sponsors that you yeah, make it's a very pre- comfortable. A lot right. more money than the other kids that graduated in my class, my age group are making today. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, you don't seem like you use your fame for access to things, but... Um, no, I, it's it's very cringe. If That's like the L.A. Yep. influencer. That's yep. why I don't want to go there and be around those people. L.A. attracts a certain type of person where it. it's like the entire city is about money and fame and who's yep. the most who's famous, car. who's getting to that party and who's... Yep, I get it. Yeah, it's... But, all right. Well, I, I appreciate you coming in, going on the Raz Report and explaining what you do, how you did this. Going from zero to what you've created, um, I mean, billions and billions and billions of views. It's it's very, very difficult. And we were excited for a while to have you on. Hope to have you on again. Yeah, Make sure you guys you tra- me, check out But What when it comes out in April. Um, you got to buy it, support. Um, yeah, this so- is my like first ever product that I am attached to fkagames.com um, and then you can it also comes with this amazing butt I know my <laughs> seven year old's gonna be all about this thing she's gonna this is this thing's gonna sell like hotcakes this is so hopefully um, oh this is great so thank you guys thank for you the for having me on appreciate uh, it thank you thank you